Kimberly Campbell with the InfoNet and the Iowa DB Council. And we are here at the Iowa House of Representatives uh, after the first full week of the Iowa legislative session that's scheduled to go for 110 days until about the end of April. Um, if there's lots of new faces this year. We have 53 new legislators out of the 150, so that means one out of every three legislators is brand new. In addition, it's the first year that they have run um, for office after the maps were redrawn following the census, so they represent a lot of new people, so the chances are you might be represented by somebody new this year. That's a great opportunity to get to know them and talk to them about your issues. But we have somebody new here this year too with the Iowa DD Council. Welcome Carlin Crow. Hi everyone, I'm Carlin Crow and I'm new to the DD Council. This is my first Capitol snapshot. It's really exciting to be here at the Capitol for the first week of the legislative session. Um, it was a very interesting first week and I know Amy's gonna give us more details. Um, but just wanted to say hello to you all and that I look forward to working with you this uh, coming legislative session and into the future um, and working on policy work. I have uh, previously done policy work for other nonprofits in healthcare, in um, disabilities arena. So I'm really excited to be working for the DD Council and to put um, a lot of effort and a lot of focus into um, all of our priorities for um, people with developmental disabilities in the state of Iowa. So look forward to working with all of you. Well, here we are in a committee room in the Iowa legislature, and this is where several of the committees meet, and you see the chairs behind us where people sit to watch what's going on. But this week, the highlights were the governor's budget. On Tuesday, she announced what her priorities and her budget priorities are gonna be and they are off and running at the Capitol. Um, not much change on Medicaid side. Um, there's a $15 million increase requested, but she is making some big, bold moves on government restructuring, so she is going to look at changing um, how government operates, turning 37 agencies into 16. So some of you might know about what's going on with Health and Human Services mer merging public health in with human services and aging. Governor's gonna look at doing that um, government-wide. So she's looking at workforce programs that might affect where vocational rehabilitation is, where the Department of the Blind are. So um, we'll be watching that closely. She also is expanding quite a bit of um, her efforts on education reform. So well, you know we'll be watching that because of um, how special education fits into all of that, but she is recommending using taxpayer uh, do dollars for scholarships um, to allow kids to go to private schools um, and have that um, school choice for parents and their students. So we'll, we'll also be tuning into that. We already have a uh, public forum scheduled for Tuesday night, so um, we'll have more information on that on our website and in our email communications, so um, keep checking that and our social media um, platforms for more information there. Another thing they're talking about is doing away with a lot of administrative rules. So a lot of people don't know when you pass a bill, um, those have to be, uh, the department has to pass rules to say how they're gonna meet the requirements of that bill. And for a long time, those rules have been getting more and more. There's lots and lots of pages of rules. So the governor has signed an order saying to agencies, stop your rulemaking. We're gonna review everything, and then we're gonna try to get to less rules in our, our um, administrative rules books. So that is, when people talk about bureaucracy, that's kind of the the hoops that people have to jump through for various programs, that's a lot to do with those rules. So, you know, in some case, you need some rules, but do you need all of them? That's one of the things that she's recommending they start going through this year. And so that was really kind of the highlights of this week. The governor's getting um, inaugurated, which means sworn into office again for her four-year term um, as we speak. We're at the Capitol. It's pretty quiet because all of her, her and all of her staff are, and all the legislators are there today 
um, at her swearing-in ceremony. I just want to remind everybody about the resources we have on our website at the iowaddcouncil.org. Um, we have um, lots of information, of course, our bill tracker. There's always already some bills that have been come, uh, come out this week. You can find those Saturday forums, the public forums, where you can meet your legislators and just learn a little bit about what's going on from their perspective. And that you can also email your legislators on your website without even knowing who they are. Our, our system will find them for you. So it's a great amount of stuff, um, information on that website. And Amy, thank you for all that you do to bring us so much detail about what is um, being proposed, the bills that are coming up, and having your eyes and ears and everything else here at the Capitol um, a lot. And she does so much for the council, and we're so um, blessed to be able to uh, work with her. I feel blessed to be able to work with you. So. Um, this week for me, I sat in on several committee meetings to get uh, a sense of what the um, priorities and the agendas are for each of the um, areas of priority that we'll be working on. And uh, just for, you know, kind of hearing an overarching theme from the people that we work with and that who want to hear from us really want to hear about our stories and your stories and your experience um, with some of our priorities, whether that's um, how you're getting care in your home or through education or your Medicaid um, waiver or services that you are or are not getting. Um, they want to hear um, what, what needs to be fixed and um, in your experience so that they have a sense of um, what the priorities are of our members and um, people that we're working with. So we want to ask you and challenge you to think about what you would tell your legislator. Um, and uh, our legislative agenda uh, was released last week to uh, a group of um, legislators and our council um, through a virtual uh, open house that we had. And we had some great attendance and some great feedback from the legislators who were in attendance. And again, they said uh, that we told some great stories on that um, open house um, webinar that we did and appreciated hearing from five or six um, people that we had um, tell their story. And actually one of the things that we're gonna be doing during these weekly chats is to give a shout out and to give it a shout out to those of you who are um, working to make change, who are contacting your policy uh, makers and um, doing things in your community that we wanna showcase to, um, to be an example of what we all could do. And so this week we wanna shout out the people who were on our open house who told their stories and um, made an impression on the legislators who were there. And actually, many of those legislators had some follow-up questions for us um, as a result of that. And um, we're getting back to them on some more details that, of course, Amy is helping us with. But I wanna give a shout out to um, Dr. Matthew Conway, Lisa Yannick, Robert Fisher, Mark Smith, and Nancy Baker Curtis. They all shared their stories, and those stories are also on our legislative agenda. Um, which is um, available online, and we'll have copies of it at um, our open house or our legislative breakfast um, for legislators, which is coming up in February. But we can get you hard copies too if you're interested in providing those to your legislator. Um, so we wanted to give those shout outs and then also, um, again, challenge you to think about your story and how you might share it with us. We're going to give you some tips later on. Um, not in this video, but later on. And um, I also wanted to start by telling you my story, so uh, a little bit. So my son, um, Sam, is uh, currently, well, he's 28 years old, and he's in the University of Iowa REACH program. Um, and he graduated from high school here in Des Moines, from Roosevelt. He did a couple of um, internships after high school to kind of figure out what he wanted to do, and one of them was right here in the Capitol. And we were very fortunate to be able to um, work through Boke Rehab and Easter Seals. He had a work coach 
who came with him here to the Capitol um, where he worked in the bill room um, for one session. That was 2019 before the pandemic. Um, right after that, he got um, admitted to the U of I REACH program and he's been there ever since and is still trying to, trying to figure out uh, what he wants to be when he grows up, so to speak. But you know, in the meantime, he has had um, some great support from um, being on the ID waiver and um, getting career counseling and coaching and um, things that have helped him uh, try and figure out you know, what he can do in his community after he gets his education. So that's um, part of a story that I have told um, to my legislators that um, the supports that have been in place for him have really helped him um, move along and figure out um, how he can contribute to his community once he graduates. And um, that's been helpful, but not everything is there. And we need to address issues of transportation um, and other workforce issues. And so those are the topics that um, I have brought to my legislators, not this year, but in years past, um, to, so they get to know Sam and our family. And they have actually reached out and contacted me because I have told them our story and have asked questions about what has and hasn't been working. So you'll get to meet Sam um, here in a minute. Um, but in the meantime, just want to thank Amy again for providing great information for us and hope that we'll be a resource for you all um, during this session so that you can tell your stories and we can make some great change. So in 2019, Sam worked here at the Iowa Senate. Want to come in, Sam, and show them where you worked? Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So remember this little cubby? Yes. What did you do in there, Sam? I worked in here. Worked was in the bill room. Mm -hmm. What did you do back there? Um, hand them bills. Copied bills? Mm -hmm. And then handed them to people like Amy, right? Mm -hmm. Who needs copies of bills so they can read it and right. know what's being proposed. Yeah, so you got to meet a lot of people here, right? Right. A lot of cool people right? like Amy and all the legislators and um, you also got to see right out on the Senate floor right. every day, right? So right. you could see everything that was going on mm -hmm. and know what was happening in, inside. You had an inside scoop to the Iowa legislature, at least on the Senate side. Yes. That was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool job. Right. Right. You want to come back and do it again sometime? Maybe. Hope so. Thanks, Carlin. I really appreciate it. And I think you all can see what a great um, part of the team Carlin is going to be. Um, we're really fortunate to have her and Sam um, <laughs> helping us out this year. And um, we'll be seeing you next week. <laughs>